Nelson Rowan, and welcome to Solicited Advice, the podcast where I get to do what I love most, give advice. Each week, I'm joined by a very special guest and several very special advice seekers as we do our best to solve all of, or at least one of, your problems. Today's guest is Lily Murata. Another delightful multi-hyphenate, Lily is the co-host of one of my favorite podcasts, Celebrity Book Club. It's hilarious, it's informative, um, it is charming, and it's delightful. If you are interested in the celebrity memoir genre or just general comedy, I highly, highly recommend it. The Rob Lowe episode is weirdly good, and uh, so is their most recent Arnold Schwarzenegger, which in which Lily does like a very insane and perfect Arnold Schwarzenegger impression, question mark. Please welcome to the show, Lily. Yeah, I am obviously new. I've been on, I've been like a guest on so many podcasts, but this is my first time like having a podcast and I it's so different and I'm so uh still uncomfortable with it. Well, you're <laughs> I'm, I'm you're wor- a pro. You look like a pro. I listened yeah, to the first episode, I, you're a pro. Thank you. That that was like really rough. We also recorded it in like 20 chunks because we had to re-record some stuff. We had like a different caller. And I'm wearing a different outfit in each thing. It's like <laughs> nope. a super cut montage of me doing a podcast and I'm wearing a different outfit in every scene. It's very funny. David's like, uh, I'm going to wear the same shirt for continuity. I was like, then it makes me look like the asshole. Right. Then but you're fully J-Lo, fine. like changing outfits like every hour, which I think you yeah, should. Like how many, yeah. How many looks are you going to have for today's podcast? And frankly, the answer is today is the, it's just the one outfit. Yeah, we're we haven't both had doing kind again, of white so. tea, like James Dean, kind of super simple. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of what I think of you when I think of your style icon words. Have you ever played that game where someone asks you to describe your style in three words? No, it sounds like my perfect game, though. Yeah, you can play it right now if you want. How oh. would you? It's like you you pick three things. That's like it's like quirky, iconic. Uh, ugh fitted or whatever like you you know you can like what are the three things and they can change mm. but i find it i find it very difficult to do i maybe that's because i don't actually have like a definitive style that's right i do th- i think if you as though actually kind of a little more the femme james dean i feel like you do do classic white oh. tea and jeans okay red lip i'll take that yeah in terms of the red jacket it's kind of you know americana yeah, yeah style uh, yeah per the taylor swift song um, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to recite the lyrics right now. I just saw Eras, the movie. So, and I was like, I know she's so like middle school camp, but like watching the movie, I was like, this is even more camp talent show sex appeal. Like everything yeah. I felt as like 12 year olds being like, wait, let's do a sexy dance with chairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and boas. Yeah, but I, <laughs> and I, I believe I ate it up. I ate every fucking second of it up. And I, now when I hear like the first few bars of like certain songs that come out, especially like the reputation, the, the chair dance yeah. situation, Are you ready I'm like it? transported. Yeah. I'm transported <laughs> to where like the first time I saw it, I went to the bathroom in between songs and came back and was like, and it was like the first few bars of it. And I was like walking alone Right, in like, the stadium, yes. like getting back to oh my, my chair. God, and chills. I was walking with a purpose. I was walking with a je ne sais quoi. I was walking like I was on stage. Well, that's and her main never... dance is walking. Yeah. Yeah. And now I walk as if I'm a little bit walking like that. I hope. Yeah. Just like sometimes when I just like when the time and place is appropriate, which is almost never. But we fit it in where we can. Walking through. Boots, kind of just pointing at different ingredients. <laughs> I do more than that, Lily. <laughs> Wait, what do you do? Stop pigeonholing me. <laughs> Stop pigeonholing me into thinking that I only cook. That's why I'm doing this podcast to prove to the world that I'm more than a shopper at the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you do Instacart, right? <laughs> well, so I do. I do use Fresh Direct a lot because Fresh Direct is not a person shopping at the grocery store for you. Yes. It, Fresh Direct, it's coming from a warehouse. It's like more like 
they have the facility they're packing their trucks no it's farm to table basically yeah <laughs> uh yeah it, they actually have a lot of great produce lily so uh okay, and you're in the new york metropolitan area you can use fresh direct and if you use the code roman oh, 20 no i'm just kidding right i don't now. have a code for you no i've seen people i've seen instacarters at the grocery store a guy i remember during the pandemic once and a guy asked me he was like what is broccoli rob and i was like but then I was like, ooh, I actually like this question. And this is why I'm so happy to be on your podcast. It's like, <laughs> you're like, and we are going to bring it around. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, well, real quick, my friend yesterday revealed to me that he thought that it was broccoli rabbi. That's funny. He thought it, that's how it was pronounced, like up until like four weeks ago. Wow. Like a hard E. I was like, okay. Huh. Um, we we learned so much. And you rethought your whole friendship. Well, also when people mispronounce food words, I feel compelled to correct them, not because I care, but because I don't want them out in the world acting like a fool. I don't want them to be embarrassed in front of somebody else that might not be as generous of spirit as me. You right. Know? And that's that's friendship. So I'm like, it's actually, yeah. And I'm like, not that I care. I don't care. But I don't want you to be in the presence of somebody who might care or might make fun of you might not approach the situation with like the spirit of kindness it is so crazy when people like really do get like cruel about that it's just like actually literally who cares like isn't it funny? yeah i think that's that's very much like youthful energy when you're like um it's actually like no one actually corrects a person now like that it's more just like if you said the if you pronounced a word wrong in the wrong in the wrong company they wouldn't say anything to you they would just judge you and then tell their friend that you did that. Yeah. And that's embarrassing. No, it is. So, and it's that, you know, I mispronounce things all the time. I don't but, think you probably don't. But hardly food. Yeah. <laughs> that's because you're a real foodie. <laughs> For those that don't know, Lily is a consummate foodie and um, fan first, friend second, I would say. If I may. Absolutely. And no. F- at, absolutely. At my, same I'll, for me. Same yeah, for me. I'll be fan first now. Now, you know, now just friends just shooting the shit about Fresh Direct. Every day. I know. <laughs> Wait, which is actually good. Sorry, to wrap that up real quick. I really like Fresh Direct because I know what they have. And so when it comes, I under like I know what I'm getting. I could get sponsored by Instacart tomorrow. You never know yeah. what happens no, in New York. You can't talk about you can't name any specific brand ever in the event in the hopeful event that they one day want to give you money to say something about their company. I know. It's it's um, so crazy. But I first I was like you you came into my life through my friends who like were really into your podcast before I had heard it. And they're like, oh, you would love this podcast. And I they, they cook your recipes all the time and fold it in the conversation. <laughs> and I was like, well, I have you're to- like, yeah, I heard it before. No, no, I, <laughs> no. But I, these were people that I really trusted. These mm. are people that I think are really funny. So I was like, oh, this is probably a good podcast. And guess what? They were fucking right. Your podcast oh. is so funny. I I die for it. You flatter. It's one it's one of the funnier things on the internet, in case anybody wants to know. Celebrity Book Club. And in just like you don't really even need to know how to read or have an interest in reading because they do all that for you. You and we hardly know how to read too. So that's what's so cool. Yeah. Is like we can I like, remember like last year we were like, let's do let's do a book together. And you're like, here are all the books that we can choose from. And I was like, I don't have time to read any of these. <laughs> so we never did. No, it. you were like, literally, no. <laughs> no, but you were also like, can you do it next week or something? And I was like, well, I certainly can't read a book in a week. What am I? I didn't go to Harvard, Lily. Like, give me a break. No, I feel like growing up near Harvard, not to brag, um, you know, that it's just the <laughs> osmosis. I have that the reading just kind of penetrated in there by just kind of, you know, I would walk. Well, like Harvard campus, like that was kind of my teen stroll to go to the CD store. So I would be like already be like uh, Harvard student, so preppy. I'm actually walking to get CDs. And did you, um, did you feel pressure to like, did like, was going to Harvard ever a thing that you thought that you had to do or wanted to do or should do? No, really it was never there. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. Your parents didn't pressure. They weren't like, oh, we see Harvard. No, God, no. They knew that it wasn't Harvard. They they took one look at me and the word Harvard never popped into their brains. But also I grew up in L.A. and that wasn't like, if anything, it was like UCLA. But right. that also probably never popped into their brains. <laughs> I didn't graduate college. So I, it was not, no. Okay, no very one, cool. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I know. Not to brag. Um, 
you too can have a podcast if you didn't graduate college. Is right. All so you, it turns out you don't need to go to an Ivy to have a podcast. No, yeah. it's pro- it probably helps. I'm sure a lot of people who did have one, and I'm sure they're very smart. Um, but I'm glad, and, you know, we just passed kind of doing a book. I know I've gotten this place where I think now everyone, I'm like, oh, do, doesn't everyone just like kind of skim a memoir every week? You can do that, right? Do you ever listen to them instead or do you always read? Are you, are you I like to do half read? and half. It depends. Sometimes I totally read. Sometimes, you know, along, say I'm going on a little weekend trip, you know, to the Poconos and then, you know, <laughs> I'll do all audio. Um and then, but sometimes you mix it up because sometimes the celebrity's voice, you want to hear it. And like, you got to get that voice on like Sharon Stone. Yeah. The, I, the only one that I've been told to read that is from the celebrity's voice is Andre Leon Talley. I was told you can't read that book. You have to listen to it because his voice is so incredible. Wow. Cause that I totally read and didn't do audio of. And I was like sobbing at the end. Yeah. Well, maybe give it another listen or give it a listen. For the give first it a one. listen. So that give I it a read recommend. through listening. <laughs> Um, okay. So I am really excited to take these callers with you because it is like, honestly, the most fun. I, I really come alive. It really is the pep in my step. It is, um, I don't know, really like makes the day for me to talk to people. You already kind of look more and more like Frasier. Just, I can tell like, as you've started this podcast, should I get a tiny dog? I feel like you need a tiny dog. Sh- oh, you know what? I should rewatch Frasier. Oh, no, it's not his dog. Watch Frasier and just get inspired. Oh, it's his dad's dog. It's his dad's dog. I think he passed away. The dog or the dad? Both, probably. I think both passed away. Okay. We can fact check that. And if, if they're yeah. still alive, I apologize. But I'm pretty sure the dog is certainly not with us. But That would make sense. I also think the dad is not with us either. Yeah. That's an old show. It is. And we're dating ourselves. Where I'm like, oh, the dog is still alive. The dog is like 40. Like... <laughs> <laughs> dog is not still alive and for anybody listening who doesn't understand what we're talking about um thank you for listening you must be very young um <laughs> okay so should we should we take some calls let's jump in i'm pumped should we fraser yeah should we use fraser as a verb from now on just generally right so you'd be like this is dr allison roman i'm listening mm-hmm. was his show called i'm listening i think it was just called fraser fraser Okay, Frasier was Frasier. No, no, whatever. I'll look into it. It's obviously been a minute. <laughs> I can't do shows with laugh tracks anymore. They bring me to a dark place. I can't explain it. Wow. Okay. You're like too punk for it. You need to laugh on your own <laughs> time. Punk for it. I, yeah. Well, I'm just like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Hell yeah. Like, I don't know. <laughs> There's something about the laugh track that I find deeply discomforting, which is ironic because a lot of my friends, in order to be comforted or like fall asleep, they watch Friends. And I'm like, grow up. I have to say I'm also <laughs> guilty of that, which not to, I don't need it to fall asleep. But if I'm like mm. sick, I am like mm, the one where like Lily's <laughs> sick. <laughs> it's fair. embarrassing. I do sex in the city. It's not embarrassing. I mean, know? also that too. So yeah, we can have it all. Um, okay, cool. Let's take some calls. I'm listening. Okay, so let's take our first caller. And I don't want to pretend to be too surprised, but I am extremely delighted. It's your co-host, Stephen Phillips Horst. Welcome to the podcast. Wait, are we pretending like we don't know you? it's you? Are no, we like, no, oh my me. God, not, okay, let's take our first caller. Oh, no, I it, thought, yeah, yeah, I wasn't sure. We're like, oh, hello, Jacques. No, it's me. <laughs> I'm listening. Okay, well, it was like a, it's like a real Sophie's choice too. When you're like, there's two people who host a podcast, but we we can really only have one guest. And then it's like, well, how can you really, how can you include both people? I and know, I think I it's th- to make one person <laughs> ask a question. <laughs> I agree. I love that you. We can't be split up. We're <laughs> we're cat. We're like two cats that are bonded in a litter. They're like, no, they have to do the podcast at the same time. No, they have to be <laughs> adopted together. Yeah, they're sisters. Like <laughs> they're, they're sisters. Scarlet and muffles. <laughs> Don't don't play well with children. I actually today somebody <laughs> tried to give me a kitten, and I have another cat that like made its way into my home. That's a stray that I have to take to the vet tomorrow. It's like a whole story. So I'm you're very already working the cat on thing. like a, a stray that you're like fostering. Yeah, no. I whatever. I can't talk about it. It's like wait, okay. how you have how many cats do you have right now? I own one cat. Her name is Margo, and she's perfect. Okay, there's a second cat that has made its way into my life that is a stray neighborhood cat, but like showed up and he was like malnourished and infirmed his tail was like fucked up and like kind of did he show like up somebody attacked your, him and i'm like well, your, i have like, to take him to the doctor on your back porch and show up at your door yes. okay 
Yeah. Oh, so it's anyway. kind of like he chose you. And- so I guess I'm I'm the one asking advice. What would you do if a cat showed up at your house and it comes to your house every night and it is starving and so thirsty? It needs so much water and so much food. But it's like obviously was someone's pet. Like it's it's otherwise a beautiful long haired cat. It is very oh. sweet. It loves people. It like only it like loves to be inside but it will not use a litter box. It will only poop and pee outside. So it's like an indoor outdoor cat. That's someone's pet, but it doesn't seem to have a home anymore. And is now it shows shipped? up to my house and the tail is like damaged. Something happened to the tail. There's like, it's like bloody. Well, it's like, fight. it's limp. It's not, it, there's something wrong. So I have oh, to take it. No. Like, would you take it to the doctor? Or is it just my cat now? Like, I don't know what to do. I think, I think it is your cat now. I mean, this is I. So I have a stunning long hair just indoor, and I always <laughs> want to get a second cat, but I'm always afraid of the intermingling because I grew up in a traumatic two cat household mm. where the two cats really didn't get along. Traumatic, as in they fought with each other. They yeah. fought with each other. You know, one would slap the other one, which drove her to have an eating disorder. She would eat all of his food. Oh, no. She became very friendly but obese. He became very angry but thin and gorgeous. <laughs> a tale is well. It became this self perpetuating cycle. It sounds like college is yeah. a joke that I would make if I went to college. <laughs> I, <didn't. laughs> I think that what Lily's saying is the universe is telling you to take this cat, but I also feel like this cat has a lot of problems and there needs to be medical professionals involved. I'm wondering if she chipped and when is the ear clipped? Like, was she feral and then re released into a colony? A colony. I, I, <laughs> well, I think that's what, what has to happen is I have, it's not neutered. It's a boy. I think I should take him to the vet, get his tail fixed, get him fixed. Although that feels fixed. like overstepping. Cause if it is someone's pet and I neuter the cat, they're going to be like, why did you neuter my cat? And you, were, and you would be like, why didn't you neuter your I feel like cat? This isn't someone's pet. Right. But then if it has kittens, then I get to keep the kittens. <laughs> well, it's not going to have kittens. It's a Maybe boy. this is like a barn cat. <laughs> Do you think this is someone's like outdoor cat keep like mass and critters away from like the barn? <laughs> yeah, but where I am, it's like. Okay, there aren't... but here's a question. You just opened a store upstate. Yeah. You need a cat to keep away mice. Store cat. Well, that's where he Maybe sleeps. Maybe that Genius. could be your store cat. That is sort of the store cat, but he goes out during oh, the day. Yeah. He like goes on a walkabout. Okay. And then he really, he will sleep downstairs on a blanket, but he really prefers to sleep on uh, the Italian velvet. So, so he does upstairs. <laughs> Okay, so it sounds like he's maybe not like <laughs> okay. He has good he has taste, great taste, but he's not like so vigilant about daytime hours. No, but he doesn't like you open the door in the morning and he goes and he does his business. But he, you have to walk him out, like you have to walk him like a dog, and he like kind of doesn't leave your side. And then he like goes out for the day, and then around eight thirty he comes back. And I, I asked everyone in the in the area. I was like, "Is this your cat? Is this your cat?" And I'm like, is this like a homeward bound situation? Like, is is he miles, hundreds of miles from home? Is he trying to find his person? Like, am I impeding him finding his way home by enabling this behavior of like housing him at night? Right. He needs to get back to Halifax. It's a long journey. <laughs> but it's very clear. It's definitely that- one of those viral s- yeah. stories where like a girl finds him and it's like some little girl in Colorado's <laughs> missing her cat. Yeah. And then they're like, Alison Roman stole her small child's oh, cat. That could and get then that I'm like, well, I don't fast. need that kind of PR. Yeah. I don't need that. Right. That's going to be, what no. was that? Like when I see the headlines. Yeah, already. I can't go through really, like, I'm unfollowing. Justin Bieber, like selling a monkey he just bought or like Jake Paul selling that pig back or stealing a pig or. Yeah. And then that's a, the, that's like, a PR nightmare. I don't, I can't, uh, but yeah. anyway, I'm going to figure it out, but I think that's, I think I have to get him, I have to get him flea medication. Cause if he's going to be living outside, he needs protection and I'm going to get his tail fixed because yes. it's, it's dangerous for him to be out there. One of my anyway. favorite evil Florida Republican attorney generals, attorneys general was famous for stealing like a Katrina family's dog. And then, and she was just like, well, it's mine now and I'm not giving it back. Do you Pam Bondi. Do you remember her, Lily? Yes, I remember. She was a, yeah. yeah. She was like a Who's villain that? from, she was like uh, just this kind of like, you know, mean, blonde, hot attorney general from Florida in like the early 2010s. Oh. Yeah, that didn't cross my desk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was shocking. bad for her career. Yeah, I think you're so right. Like, go to the vet and then, like, literally, like, see what happens. Like, let life, you know, yeah. work its Yeah, it's going to have to take like, its course. Maybe he's a store cat. Yeah. 
Maybe an old is, man comes. Is Margot in. like okay with the cat? I mean, that's the no. Question. She they the, ne- the never the two shall meet. This morning he came up the the second cat, which my friend named him Lentil, uh, came upstairs and Margot was sleeping, and I like look up and Lentil's in the room with her, and I freak out because like they're not supposed to meet. Margot would f- lose her mind. I don't know what Lentil's capable of. I had to act fast. It wasn't really intense. Um, okay. Well, thank you for helping me with my question. Um, Steven, is there anything that we can help you with? Oh my God. Allison, thank you for asking. Um, first of all, let me just say huge fan. Um, <laughs> I have and all your, you. <laughs> I have all your cookbooks. They're all very dog-eared and sticky noted and stained because they Stop. get used. Thank you. Um, no, but it's really true. Um, you know, whatever modicum of confidence I have in the kitchen is at least partially due to, you know, you providing that sort of on-ramp um, oh, I to really the highway appreciate of that. culinary That's very arts. Sweet. And mm-hmm. my, my question to you is actually cooking related. And I feel like you're kind of the best person to ask about this um, okay. because of your area of expertise and whatnot. Yeah, I do. That is what I'm famously known for. <laughs> um, so <laughs> it's a, a, both a broad and specific question. And the umbrella is... Chicken. I love chicken. Okay. I love making it. It's one of my favorite things to order at a restaurant. And people are always like, you're so boring. And I'm like, cluck, but, cluck. but good chicken at a restaurant means the restaurant knows what it's doing. And I just, mm. I love how it can take on flavor. And yet I feel like every single time I cook it, it's different. And I don't quite know how to do it right. And the best, like the, the, the most success I've had is with like sauteing a chicken breast and I just like do it mm. for a long time and I kind of burn the sides, but then it's definitely cooked through. And if I put enough like oil on it, it's like still juicy. But I've had so much trouble roasting chicken, whether it's the spatchcocking or just roasting thighs or just like even roasting what, you know, just a whole roast chicken with like lemons. I feel like I do the internal temperature. I make sure it gets to 165. Like sometimes it even goes and then I take it out and the middle's not cooked. And then I like p- take it out and put it back in. And I'm always doing this process. And then like the outside's getting burnt or like, Finally, when it's cooked, it feels like it's kind of rubbery. It's just I can never quite get it right. And then, like, the spices on the outside are burning. And I just I feel like I run into a lot. And it's just it's always like this. It's just like I feel like every time it's this it's this game. And I can't I, can't <laughs> I have really so many thoughts. It. OK. Yeah. I'm really glad you asked this question, actually. I because it is worthy of a deep dive. I think, like, the short answer is. You're not alone. It is tough. I still struggle sometimes with roasting a chicken with it. Like the breast is rubbery and dry and like the thighs are pink and bloody. And you're like, what the hell is going on here? Um, There isn't like a real to me, like one size fits all chicken solution or recipe. I will say the 325 for like two and a half, three hours is as close as I have come to roast chicken perfection. It is slow. The low and slow. It's juicy. Wow. It's brown. It's never overcooked. It's succulent. The spices never burn. There's plenty of juice left in the skillet or pan or roasting dish. If you're doing a whole chicken, that to me is the best. And if you're doing pieces, it's like got to be hot and fast. So if you're like, I'm doing a whole cut up chicken on a sheet pan, it's like 425 for 30 to 35 minutes or whatever. But there's so much other stuff to consider. Like, are there other things in the skillet, baking dish, or pot? Are there, or do those vegetables have moisture? Are they giving sauce? Are they taking up heat? Are they, how big is your chicken? Is it a three and a half pound bird or is it closer to five pounds? Like there's so much to consider because a three and a half pound chicken is actually like kind of hard to find these days, but it's my preference. But that will roast, like that will take like 30 minutes less time than a four and a half to five pound chicken, right? Like, it, it, okay. it really you do have to like adjust and i think like the bigger the bird the better you are the better off you are doing low and slow just like take more time a to get pork to shoulder a prime center. rib roast a yeah. leg of lamb any large cut of meat including a large chicken so much better low and slow for a longer period of time in the thing about the vegetables wait wow. so if there's vegetables they're <laughs> giving it moisture or they're taking away the moisture they're they're taking in the moisture. Well, they're <laughs> they're taking up space in the and skillet. They're like creating your. It's kind of like crowding the pan, right? Okay. So, like if you put a chicken in a cast iron skillet and you just put salt and pepper and oil and you throw it in the oven, right. that is going to get so much more brown on the outside and cook a lot quicker 
than if you surround it with mushrooms or you surround it with cut up potatoes or you surround it with whatever because because the mushrooms those are taking the are heat gonna, like, from the from the flame or from the induction. Yeah, it's like when you. But in a way, you're also talking about building an outfit. Yeah, of, you know, it's not wrong. It's definitely not wrong, but it definitely will. A roast chicken alone in a skillet will cook faster than a roast chicken in a pile of potatoes in a skillet. It just will. Okay. I literally didn't know that. <laughs> think about, think about like, think about a plant. This is a crazy metaphor. Stay with me. I, I've never said this before. Think about a plant. I've got plants on the brain. Think about a plant on a patio or in a garden bed and it's alone okay. and it's like being in the sun and you're like, okay. I'm in the sun. I'm alone. Here I am. It's going to get burnt. It's going to get singed. It's going to get thirstier. It's going to get drier. Right. You put a plant in a forest of other plants, it's going to thrive. It's, gonna, it's not ever yeah. going to get that brown or burnt. It's going to like, you know what I mean? Like there's protection. The moisture. So like a pot- <laughs> wet. Yeah. Yes, it's getting there's wet. A, yeah, there's a chicken surrounded by potatoes or tomatoes or fennel or onions or mushrooms it's just going to like take a lot longer for everything to get brown and cooked through. It's kind of right. like when you're sauteing something or putting something on a sheet pan and we say, don't crowd the pan, don't crowd the skillet. Cause it takes longer. People love saying they that. do, but what does it mean here? I'm, I'm here to tell you, <laughs> but it can be a good thing. It sounds like you're saying, I mean, it's delicious. It's wonderful. It's just going to take longer. Like if you have, if you're, if you're, if you're patient. Yeah. I feel like if you want something to get really like seared, <laughs> And get a stunning crust, then have it be alone. Yeah, but it's like, it's a valid question because like, also I think most restaurant chickens that are phenomenal are like either done on a rotisserie or they're done like in like the brick chicken style where there's often like a deboning process going on where like they take the bones out while it's still raw, which is like not something I'm ever going to do or ask you to do, frankly. And they like get a ripping hot skillet and they put the chicken down skin side down and they press it really hard and they then finish it in the oven. It's like a cool technique and something you could do at home, but it's just like more of a challenge. Um, But in terms of like finding a really good roast chicken method, my advice to you, Stephen, would be to start with like a simple salt and pepper chicken, roast chicken, like you could stuff it with some garlic and herbs or whatever and do one low and slow, do one hot and fast and just kind of like experiment from there. And say like, wow, I noticed that when I do it this way, here's what happens. And then you can graduate towards like, this time I'm going to add some mushrooms to the skillet. Or this time I'm going to rub it with a little paprika and garlic. Or this time I'm going to like find which one speaks to you the most in its most pure form. And then you have the confidence to say like, well, I know this method works. Okay. A day of chickens, if you will. A day of chickens. I'll go. Yeah, I don't. Not on the same day, Lily. Not on the same day. (laughs) What if you did this day? It's one weekend. You get ten chickens. Oven is on. It never turns off. You go to your coop. Sick. (laughs) I'm like, all right. Who wants to be high and fast? Who wants to be low and slow? Yeah, and but make sure, like, you know, be like, okay, these chickens are roughly the same weight. Da 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 da. Like, you know, go from there. But chickens are all different, and. It's tough. It's tough out there because people are like, oh, it's the easiest thing in the world. And I've probably said that. And it's not a lie. It's just like. It's really not because it's kind of like sometimes like a complicated thing is easier in a way than quote unquote the most simple yeah. thing. Because you're like, well, I have to follow these crazy directions. Like I got this hen from the farmer's market. You got a hen? And it was like, it was a hen. <laughs> it was like, because it was just bigger than I feel like every, any chicken I got. And I was like, oh, can I take a chicken? And she was like, this is our like red speckled hen. Um, and then like it did take so long. And I was, I felt like I kept on checking too much. And like maybe I was, did actually, I did the like hot and fast and I should have low and slowed. Yeah. The low and slow will, will do you well. And like there's a, roast chicken recipe and nothing fancy that's like with tomatoes roll and so that's not spatchcock it's just a whole bird and it comes out perfectly every time it's the it's the cover chicken okay i do know i think i've done the cover chicken it was like many years ago and it was like i did it well but like maybe sort of my boyfriend at the time was like spearheading the process no. and then i I'm think i tried I I'm sure he was. We did. Um, <laughs> and now my boyfriend and i have a much more egalitarian relationship in the kitchen and but I think I've tried a spatchcock since then and had some difficulty where we were having outside dry, you know, parts rubbery, parts uncooked, parts uncooked is my new show. But I do. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I think thank you for 
sort of walking me down this this path here because I do feel like there is all this shame associated with like not being able to cook chicken because it's yeah. allegedly easy and people are like oh it's so boring like you can't do chicken and there's all this like masculine <laughs> pride in cooking red meat well but like no one has pride in cooking chicken well so you're like if I don't cook that well then I'm just right. and I'm Where's really like that I'm really pride. a wuss yeah. you know as if it's like the lowest tier of like yeah. accomplishments like well it's yeah. like the bare minimum it's like well no it's actually pretty complicated it's not yeah. complicated it's just I will also say my final parting words of advice is that cooking chicken is very intuitive to me anyway. And especially the color of the chicken will tell you what it needs and what it wants. And another technique, which is like maybe a little advanced, um, but you sort of start, you could either start low and slow and then crank it high or like start it really high and then reduce the temperature. Something like that where you're like sort of, you know, if at, 325 after two and a half hours your chicken doesn't have enough color on it i would like drizzle it with a little bit more olive oil and then pump up the temp to like 425 and see if you can get a little more color on it but in my experience without having to change the temperature a 325 for like two and a half i'd say two and a half to three and a half hours which sounds like a really long time but if your chicken is like five ish pounds three and a half hours is not that long at 325 Great. Sorry. Okay. I mean, I usually end up eating at midnight anyway, so I'll get the oven perfect. Going just now. just plan it accordingly. Plan accordingly. Throw it in like before your work day is done, because I know you work hard. I do. And <laughs> just continue your day, and then at like eight o'clock, you're like, oh my god, the chicken's ready. You know, don't don't put it in at eight. Put it in at five. Okay. My my work day is about to wrap, so I should go throw it in now. <laughs> <laughs> and then around 10 p.m., like, just start prepping for turkey and okay. stuff like that. And then throw the turkey in, and then it'll be ready by the morning. Yeah, morning exactly. And, practice that. and for a turkey, follow the same advice. Just increase the time. But anyway, that's a story for another episode. Um, thank Which you Which so we much, already Anna. did because this is airing after Thanksgiving. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jen, oh, my God. No, this She's is, like, don't yeah, talk about Thanksgiving. That- it already happened. I was like, I don't even care. <laughs> and then I almost got through it. and that, But that was egregious. That was egregious. Um, it's me from the future. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, well, Stephen, we hope that was helpful. Is there anything else we can, we can do for you? Um, not right now, but we'll, I'll follow up via text. Okay, um, please do. Yeah. And thank you We've for your work. in the. I want you to take a look at. <laughs> Steven, thank you for your, no pun intended, raw <laughs> honesty. Thank you for allowing me okay. to be vulnerable in this space. Please, yeah, be vulnerable and be safe with fire safety and gas. Okay, and, I got my fire and raw chicken. Ready. And, ch- and uh, yeah, check out on um, my seasoning should be available soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lily'sPoultry.com.net, um, code Roman at checkout. So for, a, for a 100% premium. <laughs> <Should you buy-bad>? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It doubles the price to use the code. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Okay. Thank you for your call. We adore you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. (laughs) This episode of Solicited Advice is presented by Maker's Mark. When you think of Maker's Mark, you probably think of smooth, delicious bourbon, obviously. But you probably also think of that iconic red wax topped bottle. And now, thanks to the Maker's Mark personalized label program, you can create a bottle that's even more iconic because it will be all yours. The Maker's Mark label program allows you to gift a personalized label to anyone special in your life, your best friend, your dog walker, your in-laws, yourself. And the best part, the label is personalized for free. We love that. The holidays are upon us, and this is the perfect gift for the bourbon lover in your life, present and future. Head to makersmarkpersonalized.com, select from the list of label themes like holiday, thank you, or just because, and personalize the label with a name. Go to makersmarkpersonalized.com to order your personalized label today. Must be 21 or older. Labels currently available for 750 milliliter bottles only. Bottle must be purchased separately. Makers Mark makes their bourbon carefully, so please enjoy it that way. Makers Mark Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 45% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2023, Makers Mark Distillery Incorporated, Loretto, Kentucky. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. I feel like I don't necessarily feel more anxious at the holidays. I'm kind of an anxious person in general. And as a result, I am a 365 believer in therapy. But I know that the holidays can bring up a lot of stuff for people, whether you're going to parties, hosting events, doing family dinners, trying to get like an end of year list or sort of taking stock of what the year was for you. And it can just bring up a lot of emotion and 
stress and anxiety. And regardless of the sort of network you have in your life, your friends and your family, it can be really helpful to talk to somebody with a different perspective. It can be really helpful to have a therapist. So I think whether or not you are in therapy currently, I think that if you're curious about it, something like BetterHelp is a really awesome option to try because it's convenient. You can pick your own therapist, kind of like dating. It does take a minute to find the right fit for you. It can work on your schedule. It's entirely online. And it's sort of for the therapy curious or someone who doesn't quite know where to start. So find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. You can visit betterhelp.com slash Allison Roman today to get 10% off your first month. That's better, help, H-E-L-P dot com slash Allison Roman. Okay, I think we're ready for our next caller. I'm so excited. I am too. I'm adjusting my microphone. Um, okay, uh, please welcome to the show, Julia. Hi, thank you so much for taking my question. Oh my um, gosh, of course. How can we help you? <laughs> so um, I've worked in film for a long time and I'm now finally getting my own film off the ground as a writer director. And I do have a team, but at this stage, I'm also the de facto producer and marketer and all of that. So the thing that's difficult in a field like this is the really aggressive approach you have to take with self-promotion. Um, I feel like I tend to be modest to the point of self-sabotage and I fear being obnoxious and, um, and all that. But to even get this film made, I have to sell myself as much as I'm selling the actual work. Um, and yeah, even if I don't ever become a public figure, I still have to put myself out there. And if I'm going to continue to make films, I have to become a brand to a degree. So I'm obviously asking you about this because that's what you've done with your career. And I want to know what advice you have for someone who's about to embark on that path. Like, how do you compartmentalize? Does it give you anxiety? Um, how do you deal with that? Do you have any rules with yourself for social media? And are there things that you've learned that you would go back and do differently? I don't know, self-promotion is just a reality for so much creative work now, and it's really, really stressful, and I'm just interested to hear about your experience of it. I feel like this is the question, like, of our generation, almost. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> I ask myself this every day, where it's like, mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, one, congrats on having a film, producing, oh, starring, yeah, directing, huge. writing, huge. But yeah, you're like, oh, like, I always think first, just like, oh, I have to promote this thing. I'm selling tickets to a show. And then you're like, people must be so annoyed by me, yeah. like, posting over and over again. But then, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like, Allison, you're great at self-promotion. I don't feel like I, I These days I feel, like, not so great at it. But I'll, the other... The other thing is that there's so much stuff on the internet now that, like, you have to, like say the thing that you want to say 40 times for anyone to hear you. Yeah. And like, even though you're like, oh my God, I've said this 18 times, people must be so sick. I mean, people are like, oh, I didn't know that. And you're like, mm -hmm. how could you not have known that I've been screaming about it on the internet for weeks? You know, like it doesn't matter. Like we don't see so much because there's so much that is existing now that like, I don't know. I've always taken like, a pretty strong self-deprecating approach because I mm. also feel very um, self-conscious about it. And at the same time, I also have felt, um, I felt sad that when I made something that I didn't talk about it enough because I was like burnt out with talking about myself, I felt like I didn't do the work justice. Like I spent so much time making this thing and now that it exists, like I want as many people to listen to it, talk about it, read it, cook from it, whatever. And no one's going to find it on their own. You know, very few people will, but so many more people will find it if you show them what you're talking about. But it is really tough to do it without it also becoming like your entire identity. And I don't know, I sort of like came into it as my career grew. So it wasn't like I had to figure out how to do it in this landscape, which I think is arguably harder, but also kind of easier because everyone does it. So you're kind of like, well, you're kind of like joining the chorus and it doesn't feel as stark. Um, and honestly, like a lot of it is just like, I don't know, but like pretend like you're talking to fewer people and just being like, Hey, if I'm, if I'm writing an email to my friends to like, tell them about this thing that I made or this thing that I did. 
keep it like that in your voice and, and whatever it is that you're trying to say, rather than be like, oh, I'm talking to people that I've never met. I don't know if they're going to like it or not. Just kind of assume that you're talking to people that like, like you and that you like, and mm -hmm. those people will find you as well. You also seem like extremely level headed. And like, if you're even having these conversations with yourself, then chances are you're going to like approach it well, but think of it not as promoting yourself, but promoting your work. And if you care deeply about this thing that you made, then give it the best chance of success by telling as many people as you can about it. It doesn't mean you're trying to be like, look at me, look at me. You're just kind of like, look at this, look at this. But the, the thing can't speak without you. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's a good way to compartmentalize it. Because I feel like there's always like, yeah, there's always just the cringe factor that you have to get over. Um, yeah, it sucks. But yeah, but at, at the same time, I feel like that is all that the internet and like social media is. And that's all that we're taking in. And when I see like people do it. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think it's obnoxious when I see other people doing it at all. But do you feel like there's pressure from like, who's there pressure from for you to become a brand that you think this has to be the case to be successful? Um, I guess just because it's so like, it's so constant. And um, like, I'm in the, the fundraising and the fundraising stage for it. So that's particularly obnoxious. Um, so yeah, I feel like I just have to be I have to be putting myself out there as much as I'm putting the work out there because there's no real proof of concept yet. Cause we haven't shot. Mm. Um, so I have to say like, this is me. You need to be interested in the, the thing that I'm going to make. Um, what is, it? I, what, I is can't... what is the movie? Tell us. It tell is... us. Let's <laughs> practice. Let's okay. practice the pitch. So Good evening, it sharks. Is... <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's a short film called Jeff. It is about a phone sex operator who takes a call from a client who abuses the anonymity of the line to make a series of disturbing confessions. It is based on my real experience as a phone sex operator, <gasps> um, <laughs> which was a wild window into the human psyche. But um, there was one call that I took that was just so insane and had such a like a naturally narrative quality to it. I feel like life rarely gives you something with like a beginning, middle and end very neatly. And this kind of did. So I felt like I had to make it into a film. Um, uh, take all my money. See, how do I, how do I yeah. get this made? I need to see it yeah. immediately. See, this is, you could literally post this as an Instagram story right now. What you yeah, just said. That's true. Yeah. Link swipe up to subscribe and donate and etc. cetera. And it's you like casually talking about it. There we go. That's this is me. I'm going to jump into the deep end. Cause I'm so afraid of like emails. Like I, once I write an email, it sounds like fully spam. You know what I mean? Like it, yes. it's always I'm like yeah. awesome. We were saying better is being your voice. I'm like, hello, family and friends. I am yeah. pleased and mm -hmm. thrilled to announce I am now filmmaking. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and which I which I've done in this with like old film school professors and stuff, and just felt like ugh. But <laughs> are you? But, yeah. What is your other line? Are you like in the filmmaking industry still now? Like, is this a continuation of something that you've already done, or are you like? this is a new thing for me. Like where, where are you at in that? I no, I've been in film for a long time. I've worked on sets and I taught cinematography at New York film Academy for a long time. Um, but, um, I have two little children right now. So I have mm. a nine to five right now because the hours for film are just not feasible. But, um, but yeah, so no, I am experienced and I've done, I like I've worked on professional sets, but that's other people's money and a whole different animal. And like everything I've done for myself has been pretty small or using the resources of New York Film Academy. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the first time I'm like trying to like do something like professional level on my own. I'm watching. We're going to yeah, get this I'm thing watching. made, baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You, well, you can follow us on at Jeff Short Film on Great, Instagram. at Jeff Short Film. Yeah, at Perfect. Jeff Short Film. And we're on Seed and Spark. Um, Jeff. But yeah, the, the title of the film is Jeff. We're actually being featured on the front page of Seed and Spark right now. Hello. And what is but, that yeah. for? If, I know what it is. Uh, but like, what if somebody uh, else didn't know what it was? No, I'm so saying, I don't Seed, know what it is. You know, Seed and Spark <laughs> is a Kickstarter for creative projects, primarily film, but not just film. Um, so it's kind of tailored to to people making films. Um, the difference about it is, is like it's all or nothing crowdfunding. So if you don't hit 80 percent of your goal, you don't get anything, which is like really harsh. But at the same time, then fit like you don't have an underfunded project that's not as good as what you were trying to promise. Yeah. Um, Great. But yeah, so it's uh, seedandspark.com slash fund slash Jeff. Great. 
Amazing. Yeah, it was we have to it. support yeah. the arts. <laughs> yes. It's very difficult. It's like, mm-hmm. and I think, yeah, going, going small with the people that you already know. And then like the sort of public version of that. And just like, here's why this should exist in whatever way that you're comfortable. It doesn't have to be overly earnest. It can also mm-hmm. be like, again, self-deprecating and like who better to write a short film about a sex, a phone sex operator than a previous phone sex operator. <laughs> I'm I'm in. I'm all in. Yeah. Take all my money. <laughs> Julia, thank you so much. This is like I feel like we barely scratched the surface of being able to actually answer this question in a broad strokes way, but hopefully mm-hmm. we helped you with the nitty gritty of your specific question. But like I feel oh, like no, this absolutely. could be an entire podcast. Like Oh, it, it, it totally could. Especially just with like the thorns of social media in general. That's a whole it's a whole thing. But yeah. But it's yeah. exhausting. But no, and it is kind it's of like a yeah. job. Mm-hmm. And oh, it, it has become one already. And yeah, I think it's also yeah. okay to also the, the part, my parting words to you. Yeah. Um, maybe Lily, you have, uh, will agree or disagree, but I feel like it's also okay to not, it's also okay mm-hmm. to just be like today, I'm not gonna, or yeah, don't worry about the repercussions for that. Like, Oh, the algorithm, it's like, who cares? It's mm-hmm. like, it's a computer game. It's not yeah. real life. You can, you can put it down and like, whatever you're, you're doing enough. You're making the thing you're going to, it's going to get mm-hmm. made and like doing like the behind the scenes, like the creative journey that awaits you shouldn't be like cannibalized by like just trying to get the thing made and figuring out how you're going to like reinvent yourself in the story every time you need to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Period. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for calling Julia. Thank you so much. That is, it is really tough. And like, even Jen and I were talking about it the other day because Jen also has a podcast and it's basically like, when, especially when awful things are happening in the world, you're like, and here's this funny thing that I did. And you're like, fuck, you're like, am I the worst person? Like, I, I don't no. know. It's very tough. Yeah. Nothing feels worse than that when you're like, oh, well, I'm supposed to do my like weekly post about my thing I do. But like right now, am I really supposed to post? Yeah. And you're like, and then you do, and you're like, oh, I'm sick. Yeah, you're like, I feel bad. And then, like, the alternative is to, like, I don't know. Not post, which, and then sometimes that feels so corny to be so, like, I'm being silent right now about (laughs) my podcast in honor of lost lives. And it's like, even announcing that and saying that is worse. And the alternative to that, which is even worse, of saying, like, I'm making this thing because we have to let, like, the laughter shine yes. through or something. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, no, like, this isn't the solution either. So, like, I don't know what the right approach is. I feel like most everybody I know is struggling with that. But it's, like, the world at large, daily injustice, tragedy, et cetera. You're just like, going on. how are you supposed to just be like, everything's great. We listen, like, and subscribe. Will you you're listen, like, please, like, like, repost. <laughs> It's hell. Uh, yeah. And and even if that weren't the case, I would say that there's something just humiliating about like constantly peddling your wares of like, here's this thing I did and I hope that you like it and I'm going to put it in front of your face until you do like it or at least pretend to like, like I don't know. It's, I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling negative about it right now. No, I know. You know, you used to think back and you're like, wow, my Instagram was just me, you know, like taking a photo of like a funny sign with a weird filter in 2014. Yeah. And now it's all, it's all flyers. It's a promo. Let's check out my video. Check out this, check out this. Yeah. I'm like a full, I'm a full-time club promoter. I started drinking AG1 because as a person who lives their life without much routine, I was feeling like I needed at least one thing to sort of anchor me in terms of like not being able to eat well on the daily or exercise or sleep enough. Basically, you know, take care of myself. And that's because AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. So while I feel like it had been advertised to me for quite a while, I didn't give it a shot until two people that I really trusted sort of told me how great it was. And, you know, obviously, again, they're not trying to sell me anything and these are my friends. So I was like, okay, this this feels like a good time to give it a shot. And I was really surprised at how different I felt and how much more my sort of like 
gut health digestive system seem to be cooperating with me. And that's even after being on the road and sort of not being any sort of routine. And I found it really, really helpful. And I trust it and I I like it. I've, you know, read the ingredients. I'm like, okay, this makes sense to me. This feels good. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. And honestly, those travel packs are how I mostly consume AG1 because they're pre-portioned. They're in these little cute envelopes and I can like bring them with me wherever. So there's kind of no excuse not to drink it. Go to drinkag1.com slash Roman. That's drinkag one dot com slash Roman. You may know Shopify from a sort of helpful, handy online point of sale system, but did you know that uh, you can now take that same convenience and do it in real life at a physical retail location? Shopify POS can do everything from accept payments to help manage inventory and basically just unite your in-person transactions with your online transactions, the customers, the people working at the store, you, the business owner, like everybody is getting a same streamlined, super easy, effortless experience. You can take payments by smartphone, transform a tablet into a point of sale system, or just use the classic, you know, Shopify POS system. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash advice, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash advice to take your retail business to the next level today. That's shopify.com slash advice. You no. know, yeah, we're DJs. <laughs> of myself. I'm the club, yeah. but that is me. I'm, yeah. I'm literally in the Vegas hotels being like, would you like to come to a party tonight? Ladies get in free, yeah. except it's a YouTube channel or this podcast. No um, jerseys allowed. Um, yeah. <laughs> 21 plus. Wait, what was your first Instagram post? Do you remember? I don't remember what it was, but it was definitely, if you scroll back long enough, there was definitely like a very moody photo of like a tree at night in Tompkins Square Park. Like oh, that was the yeah. Nice. And like one was of my cat. You're a nature photographer. Yeah. I'm Ansel Adams. <laughs> I I was in I was feeling I was like I'm in a this is a moody I'm creating a mood I'm creating a vibe um yeah and like my cat and I don't know just some like other generally bad photos just horrific yes the phones have gotten better but also like there's no excuse for the poor quality of composition and subject matter like have I like why did I think that that was something worth sharing with right, the world? Right, you can't really blame the photo of a tree in Tom Square Park on the on an iPhone four. Yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't be caught dead doing that today. But it's a, <laughs> at the same time, like sixty two people saw it. You know, like I like who cares? Okay, but yeah. I bet you today, if you like went and took like a kind of a moody photo of a tree in Prospect Park and like posted it, it'd be like your most viral post ever. Save it for the stories, though. You know, like stories are, it's fine for the stories. It's well, not. We, that's fine. what I say, because there wasn't stories. So we would use to, all that stuff then would be posts. And now yeah, it's stories. That's true. And it's exactly. like, what happened to that confidence? Yeah. I'm like, oh, my coffee cup is steaming. Like, that's for the stories. <laughs> yeah. Save to it the for grid. the stories. That's not getting on the to grid. That's not getting on the grid. Um, okay. It's time for our. Uh, most, well, I don't want to say most fun. This whole thing has been really fun. But our Chef's Kiss Hotline, which I'm so excited. skew primarily uh, cooking related, but okay. um, can also be other. And I don't know what they are, and I'm excited to get to it. Hey, Allison, this is Todd. Hey, it's Rose. And we're getting ready to bed. And We're calling from Brooklyn. Yes, we're calling from Brooklyn. We're off the house stop on Metropolitan. <laughs> And we love to cook together, and when we're done, we usually put on one of your YouTube videos, and we love your old stuff, your new stuff. Um, Congratulations on getting married. Yeah. We just got married, too. Yeah, that's true. And I guess our pressing question is, who cooks for you? Yeah, you cook for your friends, for your crew, for people in your life for strangers and um yeah who makes you the loving chicken cutlets and rotisserie chicken and you know gorgeous tuna cakes tuna cakes no 
comma cakes. Okay. <laughs> she said cakes. No, she does mention a comma and she has cakes. Anyway. Okay. Sorry, we're we're back. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations on the launch of the podcast. We can't wait to listen. Bye. Bye. I want what they're having. They're having, yeah. Whatever it is that they're having, I want it. I want I want it injected. I want it in a cup. I want it on a plate. Whatever. I want. I want. I want all of it. (laughs) I I think they're going to be married for the rest of their lives. Yeah. If we could bottle that. Hearing that call, it's like that was a beautiful combination of like audible horniness and like intoxication and inebriation and like Dionysian like joie de vivre. Is that kind of this I, perfect kind of drunk where they're like, also, I love that, like, your home videos, it's not before they cook, it's like after they <laughs> cook, it's kind of this, like, dessert, like, ooh, what could happen next? <laughs> we both looked at each other when they said after we finished dinner, and but, like, whatever works, you guys, a view is a view, and <laughs> I'm really yeah, happy to have no. you. <laughs> Um, wow. And they were well, like, let's just call Allison Roman's podcast. Let's just do it. It was one of my favorite questions to date. So first, I want to say congratulations if you're listening. Um, Congrats. And second, thank you for calling. Um, I would say not that many people cook for me. And I don't say that with sadness. I say that just as a matter of fact, because it is my husband does not cook. He famously does not cook. He cooked me. He made me matzo ball soup. When he proposed. And that to me was wow. like a huge Before or deal. after? Before. And then, we, okay. and then we ate it and then we watched a home movies. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, he and I was like, wow, like he, I knew that something special was happening because he made me soup. He, my favorite soup, actually. But like also, you know, matzo ball soup, kind of next level. Not, not that's, I was going to say like, that's not a beginner's soup no. to me. I feel like that's a super elevated soup. Yeah, but he also was like, he's like, it was actually, because I wasn't home when he did it, obviously. It was a surprise. And he was like, it was very easy because I was in our, he was in our kitchen. He's like, and I just used the pot that you used and did the thing where you did it. Like everything, he was like color, paint by number. It's like, he was able to like really follow along the home movie recipe right. by watching because he was in the same place with the same equipment. He has all your stuff. Yeah, exactly. So actually, this is the key to cooking a great meal. Break into your home. <laughs> <laughs> Use whatever pot you have. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a like Crusade girl, frankly. I'm like a, I'm like Levi's, like Crusade, uh, Ray-Bans. As I said, you're the, you know? you're the female James Dean. Haynes. Yeah, I want, I'm like <laughs> I, classic, iconic brands. Um, no, my friends, uh, Mila and Lauren, who you also know, who are also friends of yours. So that's how we kind of connected. And Mila, yeah. by the grace of God, put us on a group job. He did. He did. He did. <laughs> um, and I'm so grateful to him that he did. But when I visit them or they, you know, when we lived together during the pandemic, like they cooked for me all the time or we cooked together. It's more like we cooked together, okay. which to me friend is cooking. better than being cooked for. Like I love to cook with people. Um my friend Danny cooks a lot. My friend, uh, my friend Chris cooks for me sometimes. Like if we're we're in the house together, there's like some people that I'm like, oh, I trust you, and this is a fun, relaxing right. experience to cook together or be cooked for by you. But have you had like people, <laughs> friends, be like, oh, I really want to cook for you, and then like they do, and they're like really stressed out. Um, if they are stressed or out, can you sense that happening? And then you're like, you know what? Let's my just friend, my friend, Helena, also previous podcast guest. She, she cooked a recipe of mine that like, I haven't published yet that she was looking for like a lamb recipe and I gave her the recipe and she didn't follow it. And I walked in the house like for dinner <laughs> time. And fired. she was like, I have to tell you that I didn't follow the recipe. Like she was like <laughs> clearly stressed about it. And I was like, why didn't you just follow the recipe? <laughs> it is a good recipe. <laughs> She's like, well, cause I didn't like believe that it was going to work. And I was like, believe me. Trust me. Wow. That's like she all I have is my integrity you. when it comes to recipes. Like if you can't trust me in a recipe, like what is our friendship based on? But she yeah. is also a great cook. Really wonderful. And, you know, I'm the honestly. Fact that you guys came back from that. Yeah, it's tough. It was tough. We had to go to therapy. Um, couples counseling. We, but if anyone is like ever volunteered to cook me, I'm, I'm extreme. I'm 
probably never less judgmental than I am at that moment. I'm like very un- non-judgmental. I'm more judgmental at a restaurant than I am if like I'm going to someone's house that they're cooking. That makes so much sense. I don't see you being like, huh, you're cooking for me. Try that. Hey, Allison. My name's Gentry. I am from Utah. Um, I have a question about cutting costs when cooking. I have a little family of four and I love to cook, but I want to die every time I check out at the grocery store because I love good ingredients. And I know that some places you splurge and some places you can get a store brand or whatever, but I just want to know what your tips are of ingredients that you would splurge on versus save on. Mm. This is a really good question, actually. Um, so yeah, I mean, ingredients are really expensive now. The grocery store is really grocery expensive. One, so expensive. Yeah. One thing you could do is you could open a grocery store and then that way you get immediate wholesale prices on all your things. I found that to be really, well, well that really works for me. Um, <laughs> That's no. such a good plan. Hold on. Wait, I'm going to open an LLC right now. Um, no, but honestly, like I'm very cognizant of how and where I spend money on ingredients and like what is quote worth the splurge and like what I can save on. Um, I will say there are certain ingredients that like, I like, especially dairy, any sort of meat or fish are the things that I find to be very difficult to cut costs on, um, which means I just eat less of it. So -hmm. like rather than buy the cheaper chicken and eat chicken every night, I'll buy like the really nice expensive chicken and then eat it once a week, you know, and kind of figure out ways to make things like beans and lentils and pasta and, you know, vegetables a bit more interesting and plentiful rather than like the big ticket items or you know you roast a chicken which normally feeds four it's like next time you start you know make sure you have leftovers or make it serve six or kind of stretch the proteins or like the bigger more expensive things um i was gonna say that i do feel like sometimes also in our culture it's like you feel like you're like oh i want to make like a recipe every night and with the proteins i feel like you can stretch it to be like yeah i made you people kind of Sometimes a lot of leftovers are forgotten. So it's just like, remember what's in your fridge. It's like, make that chicken and then like tacos, soup, stretch it out. Yeah, get get ta- Be- taco, soup, soup in a taco, taco in a soup. Like Yeah, just like think, you know, a little more pioneer woman about it and be like, embrace the fact that you are like this like mom of seven boys and be like... <laughs> Well, it's a small family of four, but yeah, she's, okay, okay. you know. um, but yeah, I think like next time you're like, okay, I can buy the nice jar of capers or the weird, like cheaper brand of capers, go for the cheaper brand. Like, unless you're in, you know, Pantelleria, like the capers don't matter, but like, right. you know, or if you're like buying organic is important to me because I vote with my dollars and I want, you know, that to me is like a signal that I want to support those farmers, support that initiative. Like that's important to me and that's how I'm going to live my life. Or if you're like, I, it doesn't actually matter to me. I don't care. Don't feel guilty that you like have to buy like the organic beans versus the non-organic beans or whatever. But as like a, not to bring it back to the fact that I own a tiny grocery store now, but it is shocking to me how much ingredients cost. And so much of it is to me, like in my heart of hearts, I believe in because making food and ingredients is so complicated. Like farming is so expensive. Labor is, should be expensive because people's, you know, they need to be paid reasonable wages. The effort that it goes, yeah, that goes into growing kale or like picking beans or to, you know, even further like dairy production, like things are, require so much work and that's why they're expensive. And so I think one way to mitigate the cost or like to feel less painful about it is to like really make sure that you're, you know, trying to decrease your food waste to kind of like, I don't know, having just like to your point, like the leftover thing. Like I, just I leftovers it up and yeah. like push yourself. Use one of those like websites. That's just like, I have this thing, this thing and this thing left over. Like, mm-hmm. what can I make? I think also do, I mean, this woman. Wait, is what a is monster, that website? She's, <laughs> what are you talking oh, about? I, I honestly don't know. Someone I like read about it. Of course, I forgot. There is some website where it's just like you can. 
Oh, no, you put in like what ingredients you have and what cookbooks you have already own. And it will like tell you what recipes are in there. No, I hate this. Internet I hate is that idea. Crazy. That sounds scary. That's too, that's like AI. It's a little too, and I've never used it, but I I'm plugging this thing. I have that no freaks idea. me out. More okay. What disregard. If you just heard that, dis- unhear it. I hate it. Cut it out. Cut it out. Okay. <laughs> is the mental jump? I do this where I'm like go and I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm buying this chicken for twenty four dollars, and then like will not think for a split second about oh god, buying a seventeen dollar just... glass of wine at a bar. Sorry, ladybug. Did you get stung? No, it's not a real ladybug. It's like a beetle. Whatever. Um, if you're looking at the video, you saw it. But if you're only hearing it, you did not see it. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's it's very difficult. But I also think like reframing that like food is a luxury. It should be a luxury. It's going to cost money because things require a lot of labor and resources and water and take a toll on our environment. And like it's it's a pretty intense industry. So I think, you know supplementing your your more your beet your meat your protein your fish your dairy with things like vegetables beans um lower cost high protein delicious things you'll find it to be like less overall expensive but also the more that we as a population can accept the fact that like if you want to eat a nice steak it's going to cost you and it's like it's going to be expensive and you know what? and that's okay just don't do it as often or tr- or treat it like a real special occasion Hi, my name is Noelle. I'm from Toronto. I'm actually looking for your favorite recipes to batch cook and freeze. So my 21-month-old daughter, Bowie, has a really severe sesame allergy, and we can't let her get picky because almost everything in life has sesame, so she gets served things with turmeric and chili flakes and curry, and we're constantly working to expand her palate. And we also have to send her food to daycare because of her allergy. Um, the good thing is she'll pretty much eat anything, including other babies' mother's breast milk, which is a whole other story involving Toronto Public Health. Um, because we have zero time to prepare dinner between when we get home from work and when we do daycare pickup, we have to batch cook meals and then defrost them. So we've uh, frozen your lasagna, your chickpea curry, your tomato shallot sauce, all of that, and we make things from your cookbook and your YouTube and your newsletter, and she really liked the carrot cake. So my question is, what are your favorite sesame-free things to batch cook and then freeze? Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> According to our producer, Jen, we've gotten a lot of questions about batch cooking and what are, like, the best meals to batch cook and then freeze. Um, this specific one is related to sesame allergy, which I didn't – she said that there's sesame in everything. I didn't know that. I was, yeah, neither did I. I was like, well, that's easy. Every food doesn't have sesame. <laughs> unless you're I was making, like, well, like, it only has it if you chicken. put it in there, but I guess that's not true. Um, I'm also, this relates because I'm also about to, my friend just had twins and I was going to make her some stuff to say it with me, batch freeze. <laughs> a BF. Um, yeah. It's a BF it's lifestyle BF up, over so. here. Um, I would say like anything, I buy those uh, like quart containers from restaurant supply stores um, or at Jeff Bezos's warehouse. And they're great for making like soups, stews, stocks, broths in and like cording them up and then freezing them because you can make like a big batch of like tomato lentil soup or chickpea stew or harissa and bean stew or split pea soup or frizzle, frizzle dilly bean stew, whatever. Like all those things freeze so beautifully. Um, The only things that I sort of avoid freezing are when there are like big leafy greens in something. So like if you're making chickpea stew and there's kale added at the end, make the stew without the greens and then freeze it. And then when you defrost, add the greens. And that's like maybe not as convenient. And frankly, if you added the kale and then froze it, it's fine. But you just changed my entire afternoon. Yeah. (laughs) Of what I was going to do. What were you going to do? I was going to do like a Portuguese sausage, kale, bean soup. Yeah. And you can still. Oh, no, which I can, but I was, I was going to add the kale in, but now I'm like, and I thought about that and I was like, oh, but is the kale going to get weird? It doesn't get weird. It just kind of, it gets less green. Not as effervescent is kind of what you're saying. Yeah. But honestly, if you've just had twins, if you've just had twins, you're not trying to like de-stem kale and add it. Like just put the kale in, make it as easy as possible for your friend. Yeah. You're a good, you're a better friend than me. I'm like making them make do the kale part. And you're like, (laughs) and being like, you really should. (laughs) But also things like baked pastas that can be put in like vessels smaller than a baking dish, like loaf pans and stuff like that. 
if it's a smaller family, if you're feeding six people, like, I mean, even like a nine by 13 lasagna frozen is going to take a really long time to defrost. And then you're left with a giant lasagna. But if you freeze the lasagna in like loaf pans, like nine, like a nine by four or something like that, it's more for like a family of two with a newborn or a family with two, with two new newborns um, or a 21 month year old, um, 21 month year old. Wow. 20, when someone doesn't have kids and it's me. Um, uh, yeah. I've always like, when do we start doing the months with the babies? I hate it. Like it's, like, it's always they're 32 months. I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. what is that in yours? <laughs> But again, Speak I don't have English. them. So, um, but yeah, any sort of soup, stew, moment, broth is excellent. Um, but I guess you're not, <laughs> sorry. I'm just laughing at this advice because I'm suggesting you give your toddler broth for their daycare. <laughs> you're like, yeah, so um, just do a low, medium heat, <laughs> use a Le Creuset. Wow. Worst advice I've or like ever given. <laughs> this tiny toddler going with their like Brodo bone broth <laughs> to daycare being like, I actually got the lamb today. It's a it's an Allison Roman recipe. Can you grate the garlic in fresh at the end? Thanks. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. So I guess if you're talking really <laughs> earnest advice, like for the toddler, batch meal for that that you can freeze wait do toddlers have a microwave at daycare <laughs> i think it's like it's they're freezing and then it's defrosted and they're taking it to daycare is what they're saying <sighs> in the question not that they're defrosting at daycare it's like okay we're defrosting this got thing got it got it got it again i don't for not having kids or understanding how daycare works or 21 <laughs> right. on, on year old lives so they have a commercial kitchen usually <laughs> at daycare <laughs> Okay, one thing about it's also so crazy because I went to this completely insane Shark Tank event, which all this with all this free. I Shark saw Tank with Barbara products. Corcoran. <laughs> I met Barbara Corcoran and um, Mark Cuban. So, and I took so many of these. It's basically like huge ice cube trays, but they basically had all these like big um, freezing trays for soup and broth. Mm. And I, I took three and an ugly Christmas sweater. So you can also. Well, well, next time call Give me. Give that to you your child. One. I don't know. Yeah, aren't twenty months year old usually kind of like pretty? Like when do they? I don't even know when they start. That's eating, almost like, two solids. years old. That's almost two years okay. old, and they're definitely eating solids at that point. Um, they'll kind of eat anything, is from what I can tell from my kid, my my kids, my friends with kids. But yeah, I would say like brothy chickpeas, brothy beans, anything you can defrost and then add something to. If you're like, okay, I have this whole you know, already flavorful batch of beans or chickpeas or lentils or something like that. You can defrost and then say like, yeah, I'm going to add a handful of spinach. I'm going to add a chopped tomato. I'm going to add, you know, some yogurt to put on top, like whatever you can kind of customize and go from there. So at least you always have something ready to go. Um, yeah. Also keep a lot of like canned products on hand. I think like canned beans, if you're not already doing, I imagine if you have small children and you're not like going to take the few hours to like do the beans overnight or whatever. Like that's a really nice solution that you can just kind of very quickly throw together something and then freeze it. All right, next caller. <laughs> Hi, Allison. It's Kim from New York, New York. Um, I have a scallops question. I love scallops. I want to cook them all the time, but literally no matter what I do, I can't get them brown. They always end up creating so much liquid in the pan that they just cook and don't brown. And I pat them dry. I do all the things, but it doesn't seem to work. Help. I love scallops. Hi. hi. I think this woman's afraid of heat. Lily, you fucking nailed it. Your skillet's not on a Yeah. You rip, yeah. Let it Turn rip. It up. That skillet's <laughs> got to be smoke. Literally, I want to see wisps of smoke coming off that scallop or off that skillet. Walk away from the pan after you turned it on. Not for too long, but you know. I've done that. Have you ever done that where you like, I'm going to preheat the skillet and then you like walk away for way too yeah. long and completely forget about it. And it's like. No, and then it's burning. You're like, what is burning in my house? Yeah, it like turns red. It's like glowing <laughs> in the corner and you're like, oh, fuck. Um, your skillet is not hot enough. It has to be super, super hot. It doesn't matter how dry the scallops are, how much fat is in the pan. They need the, it just needs to be ripping hot. I would say ripping hot and plenty of oil in the skillet. 
and you're going to get a beautiful, gorgeous brown scallop. And the best thing in the entire universe is the, is the scallop bond. So Mm. those like brown bits that form in the skillet after searing a scallop, it's like nothing you've, it's, it's the best flavor in the world. It's better than any seafood. It's better than any meat. And if you know, you know, if you know what I'm talking about, it is a very specific, unique thing that happens only with scallops. I mean, like many foods give off a fond, which is like the brown bits from searing a piece of protein, but the fond that forms from a scallop should be sold in the stores. I would pay a hundred dollars for it. Sell it it at your store. (laughs) Scallop fond. Flying off the shelves. This season's (laughs) hottest gift. It's scallop fond. (laughs) But do, Lily, do you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. And actually, here's my question for you. Um, when then, like, you want to do a pan sauce, like, would you, with, you know, your classic white wine and butter stuff, would you do the white wine after you flip the scallop or you take the scallops off, then throw in some butter, shallot, white wine after the scallops are off? I do it. That's a great question. Because what's going to happen if you add this, if you keep the scallops in there and then you add the white wine and the butter, that liquid and that fat is going to lift the brown, not only from the skillet, which we want, but it's also going to lift it from the scallop, which we don't want. Okay. It's going to like wash which the scallop. Don't. The fronds. Okay. And then you can't sell any scallop fronds. Fond, yeah. Fonds. <laughs> <laughs> but I like scallop frond as an idea as well. <laughs> I will. Yeah. That's going to be the name of my store. I also love this caller being like, I want to eat scallops all the time. Like, yes. Just yeah, are you a million? Multiple nights like, a week. <laughs> They're so expensive. <laughs> Last time I bought scallops, I it was like $48 for four of them. And I know I'm like always like food should be expensive. And I do believe that. But there is <laughs> like, like nothing no, more expensive more. than a scallop. It's like they are luxury. So expensive. Yeah. Hi, Allison. My name is Melissa and I'm calling from Seattle, Washington. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for starting a podcast because I feel like I finally found one that fits my niche. So I have to know what other podcasts you listen to. Ah, oh, perfect. Okay. Well, I'm so glad you asked. (laughs) Um, I'm not just saying this, but I listen to Celebrity Book Club. Wow. My podcast, Celebrity Book Club with Steven and Lily. Hosted by Lily and Steven. Oh, Lily and Steven. I like, Mm. I like the. But it's with Steven and Lily officially, right? Yeah. It is. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm... Men first. We have to elevate yeah. them. But I'm using this podcast as like an excuse to kind of talk to my favorite podcast hosts and people that I also want to be friends with, you know? So like... I, that's literally the why to have a podcast. It's like a really good way to make friends yeah. after college. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I also listen to uh, Who Weekly. I listen to Stradio Lab. Love. I listen to Las Culturistas. Las Culturistas. Um, I listen to uh, I listen to NPR every morning. That's not really a podcast. That's really more of a news news program. Um, okay, I listen to educated. Talk Easy with Sam Fergoso. Um, what else do I listen to? I listen to um, Search Engine with PJ. I think that's a really good podcast. I've never heard of that. Should I listen? And you should. It's like um it's like a it's a very, very produced podcast in that like it's like a deep dive on a single subject or a question. Um Okay. But similar to this show, I suppose, they answer a question. But those questions are more like, you know, is it okay to drink the coffee on an airplane? Or why are diamonds so expensive? Or why doesn't Netflix tell Truly you how many we views all want that... to know? Yeah, exactly. But it's like well reported and interesting and it's well done. All great options. I, okay. okay, speaking of that, I'm always playing this podcast of, it's called Business Wars, and it does like deep dive on brands or two different businesses who have wars. So it'll be like Zara versus H&M or like. Wait, this is your idea for a podcast? No, 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 no. This is a podcast I'm plugging that I Oh, okay. Love. I was going to ask you. Business yeah. What are Wars. your favorite, what are your favorite podcasts? Um, this podcast list of advice with Alison Roman, I find it so informative and like funny and just like really approachable. And oh, like, you're like, Oh, you're my best friend. But like, I'm also learning so much. Um, okay. This business wars, which is basically, yeah, it's like a sort of like ESPN versus like sports center. I don't know. They do a deep dive onto like a crazy business war. Um, I'm is obsessed it like- with 
Is it like a history of their beef or like what's or is it just yeah, like, like a history okay. of their beef with like interviews? Got it. Um, Love's Radio Lab. Lo- I, I was just on this podcast and I love it so much. Exploration Live um, mm. with Charlie Bardley and Natalie. I forget her name. Anyway, I thought that was funny. And I love those two Southern women. It's like the number one podcast in America. They don't need my plug, but you, I've had it. And it's those like two Southern women. And they're just like, I've had it with children's birthday parties. Wait, it's called I've Had It? Yeah. And it's them complaining about stuff? Yeah. And they're God like damn, age, I wish that woman. that was my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like number one. They're like the Ugh. female. Yeah. That sounds good. I want to listen to that. And I want to be on it. You should be on it. And I'm loving Kristen Cavallari's new podcast, Let's Be Honest, which you should also be on. What is it called? Let's Be Honest. Oh, I, th- I thought you were saying, like, <laughs> Let's Be Honest, I love her podcast. But her podcast is called Let's Be Honest. No, Let's Be Honest is called her. Yeah. I love it. I, I, I you know, I love, I love a microphone. What can I say? We could go on. We could keep on going on. I know, but we won't. But um, number one pod. My favorite is this device. <laughs> And mine is Celebrity Book Club with Stephen and Lily. We have such Um, brave taste. (laughs) Uh, Well, Lily, thank you so much for being on this podcast. Thank you so much for being my friend. Thank you so much for your amazing advice. Thank you so much for having me on, for making my, my foodie dreams come true. This episode is brought to you by Maker's Mark. Solicited Advice is hosted by me, Allison Roman. Our podcast is produced by Jennifer Sullivan with the help of Elena Rodriguez Villa. Technical production and editing is handled by Red Rock Music and our theme music was created by Yosef Monroe. And for questions, sponsorship inquiries, or anything else, please visit us at allisoneroman.com slash podcast. <laughs>